the other book too. I guess it just didn't look like one. <laughs> Not as big one there. No, man. I, I let's get under that one. Praise God. Hey, hey, this is our Bible, if you don't mind. I know some of you probably been looking at it. Zechariah chapter number 8. Zechariah chapter number 8. Zechariah chapter number 8. And, uh, boy, I sure hope uh, uh, that you, uh, of course, uh, get a hold of the great truth God has for us here today. And uh, I'll read this verses 20 uh, through 23. And uh, we probably have only out like 23, and that's where we're going to be at. The says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and inhabitants of many cities. And inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people, a strong nation, shall come to seek the Lord God of, the, of hosts of Jerusalem, and to pray before the Lord. And thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days shall come to pass, Ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Yeah. Tonight we want to talk to you from this thought. God is with the Jews. Amen. God is with the Jews. Father, would you bless now? Would you help? Would you encourage? Would you teach? Just a simple truth as we give glory on his praise in Jesus' name. I'm going to be upset. Amen. I just want to start off with giving you a couple of things, not only outline there, but I want you to understand a little bit about this here uh, portion of Scripture. Amen. God has uh, uh, finally, Christ comes back, set up his reign, his rule, and uh, what has happened here is that, is that God says uh, there's going to be a restoration of the children of Israel, the Jews. He, he lets us know these are the Jews. I'm not a Jew. Yeah. I'm not a Jew. Amen. And God is saying there's going to be a restoration of his Jewish nation. And, uh, and what's happening here is a lot of people saying, okay, uh, I think I'm going to go up and talk to God. Yeah. I think I'm going to go up with you. And then say, yeah, me too. I'm going also. Mm -hmm. um, all these nations said, we're, we're going to be going there. Right? And, by the fact, it will be a perfect time doing a perfect rain. Amen. Amen. And then they said, here's the reason why we're going. We go with you for we have heard that God is with yeah. you. God's with the Jews, amen? amen? And I want you to understand that because, again, everybody's wondering what's going on. I told you this morning here, people say, oh, what, what does this sign mean? What does that sign I believe in the imminent return. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen at any time. Yes, it's, right. it's the day. That's right. It's the day. The day is the day. That's and right. The day is the day. Amen. Well, when is the day? It's when he said it's today. Amen. 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 Whatever day he picks, it's going to be that day. Remember when I told you, if we believe that Christ can come back at any time, then guess what? Watch this, Miss Melba. Then guess what? He could have came before Hamas attacked Israel. Amen. Amen. Then if we believe that. Sure. And people say, well, this, sign, this has to be waiting a minute now. The only thing that has to happen for us to be raptured out of here is for Jesus Christ to come down, not touch down, come down, let us be caught up, and let us be taken away. Amen. 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 So again, you can, I'm not going to argue this with well, this sign and that sign and this sign. And remember I told you that a lot of this stuff we're reading, they thought that they had it going on. Right. They thought that right there was going to be their day. And God said, right. no man know the day nor the right. hour. And it's coming like a thief in the night. Somebody say amen. amen. And what you and I need to do is just be ready for whatever amen. that day is. Amen. And we told you once that day comes, there's going to be that departure. Somebody say amen. amen. But there is that delay. Why? Because God will get another chance to get ready. But after, after all of that, please get a hold of this here. And he come back and talk about the revelation. After all of that, and he comes back down and we're going to ride a horse. And hey, Miss Norman, tell Brother Les this. I just got to say this this morning here. I thank him for teaching my grandsons how to ride a horse. But he's going to take seven years to teach me how to ride one to come back here. Praise God. You say, preach, come on now. Hey, guess what? I, I thank God. We get to come back. I'm, listen, we're not, we're not going to have to fight. We're not going to have to war. We're not going to do any of that. But once he gets done, guess what? He's going to set it all up. It's going to be real nice and fancy. Right. And, and, and we, we're going to just enjoy time. Amen. Amen. But guess what? God says, here's what's going to happen. Finally, people are going to get some sense. Amen. And here's what they're going to say. I'm going with you. <laughs> Why? God's with you. Yeah. Yeah. God brought you through. God's kept you through all of this. Yeah. And they, they've been looking for your sin, the Bible says. They can't find it. That's right. Uh, because what? God is with the Jews. Amen. 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 So there's some things I want you to 
understand when it comes to this book of Zechariah, chapter number 8. Real simple stuff. I'm not going to labor too long. First of all, I want you to understand. God said he's going to restore the city. Verses 1 through 8, there's going to be a restoration of the city. And when God restores the city, guess what? It's going to be a wonderful place. Why? Right? Because he's going to find it in here. Set it up, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's going to rule and reign. And we're going to just enjoy life with him. Amen. 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 So God says, guess what? Don't you want to be with that? Don't you want to be a part of that? Don't you want to get in on that? I want in on it. Somebody say amen. 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 And you know what I decided? I'm going to stay with the Jews. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only does he talk about the city being restored, but he helps us to understand there's going to be some changes coming on. I wish I had time to labor all of this. Man, I was trying to underline stuff and, and get, it to, get it to work out. Look, if you would, please, verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the, uh, among the Hebrews, uh, o, o house of Judah and the house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. But fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, and I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me in wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again have I thought in these a way to do well. Come on, help me now. Well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. God shall restore the city. There will be some changes going on in the city. Well, you, of course, not what you're supposed to be. I didn't destroy you. Why? Because guess what? I said I wouldn't consume you. Yeah. But guess what? There's going to be some changes. Right now, not only there's going to be a, a restoration of the city, there's going to be some changes during the restoration. Look what God does. God gives a command now. Verse 16 and 17, a command. Look what he said. Now, these are the things that ye shall do. Now, wait a minute. It, these are the things uh, uh, that, that ye shall do. When he says, what's this, Brother Scott? These are the things that ye shall do. You're going to do them. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to be perfect place. Yeah. Here's what he said you're going to do. You're going to speak every man with the truth to his neighbor. <laughs> you execute yeah. judgment of the truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his, his, his neighbor and, and let love no false hope. For all of these are things that I hate, said the Lord. So here's what God said. There's going to be a restoration of the city. There's going to be a change going on in the city. And here's the commands I give you in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody will break it. Come on, help me. Yeah, yeah. Man, aren't you glad that we got a God that is going to give us some time to get it right? But even if we don't get it right, he's going to set up a kingdom so we can finally be right. Hey, guess what? I think I'll stay with the Jews. Amen. Amen. Right, because God's with the Jews. Right. I think here's what God said. Here's the conditions in the restoration. Verses 22 and 23. And we, we kind of hit it. But here's the condition. Here's, here's the reason why this thing's going to work. Because God's going to be there. Right. And God's going to be with them. And anybody that comes to be with them, God said, I'll be with you too. Yeah. God told Asa the king long ago, he said, now as long as you're with God, he'll be with you. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that that's the same way it is today? Right. But wait, it's going to be better then because he's going to be there. Brother, 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 uh, 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 Christopher, you need to understand something here. God's presence is going to be there. God's purity is going to be there. Yeah. God's people are going to be there. Yeah. God's praise is going to be yeah. there. Amen. God says it's going to be a place that you're going to want to be. It's going to be prosperity in that place. It's going to be profitable in that place. Yeah. And here's the one I like. It won't be any more punishment in that place. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Why? Because God's going to be. Hey, I think I'll stay with the Jews. Amen. Amen. God's going to be with the Jews. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the thing I want you to get tonight. Because, again, they can say what they want to. And, of course, this is going to take some while before we get there. This is not this day. This is on another day. It's okay. Amen. But God is saying there's some things you need to understand. Why it's so important that even today we stay with the Jews. Amen. Amen. Why should we stay with the Jews? Why should we stand up with the Jews? Yeah. Why should we support the Jews? Why should we do that? Because I want you to understand something. God's with them. But wait a minute. Let's do it better than that. Go to Malachi chapter 3 if you don't mind. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Man, I'll tell you what. This is wonderful to me. And by the way, this is back over there. This is what's going to happen. This is what's happening now. And this is what's going to happen over there in the future. Yeah, man. What's that? Get this here. The Supreme God has not changed what he said about the Jews. That's right. I just put down the Supreme has not changed. But the Supreme God, the Sovereign God, has not said what he has said about the Jews. 
And I tell you what he said about the Jews. What did he say? If I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you yeah. sons of Jacob are not consumed. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold on a second here. I read that. And I started saying, okay, God hasn't destroyed them. Here's what God is saying. And I'm not going to let you do it either. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, man. Amen. You're not going to let you're not gonna let anybody destroy them. Oh, I know we had a time when they weren't the nation, but guess what? It's amazing how they were gathered back and become a nation all those years ago. Why? Because God said they won't be consumed. You can't wipe them out. They have no expiration. Guess what? They won't be expelled out of God's presence. They will not be eliminated. You're not going to be able to extinct them. You're not going to be able to get rid of them. Why? Because we got a God that says, I haven't changed, and the Son of Jacob are not consumed. I need the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I think I'll stay with the Jews. Amen. Why? Because God is with the Jews. Amen. God is with the Jews, and he's supporting the Jews, and he's keeping the Jews, and he's holding up the Jews. And he said, one of these old days, the body, somebody's going to get their right mind, and they're going to want to come and be with the Jews. Amen. Right. Amen. But we've got a problem today. Seems like everybody's trying to get rid of them. It's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. We got people who, of course, are doing some sneaky things. Yeah. They're supporting their enemies and stuff. What they're saying, but they, they used to say, smiling in their face and stabbing them in the back. Yeah. Right. Don't worry about it. They still got God. Yeah. God's with them. Even today, even right now, God is with them. And God said, you wait till we come to an end. I'm going to still be with them. Right. You can say what you want. You can talk how you want. You can act the way you want toward them. But God says, you better get on board because I'm with the Jews. Amen. Amen. Number next, right there. Why should we take and stay with the Jews? God's with the Jews. But get hold of this here. The scriptures have not changed. That's right. right, right. Why should we stay with the Jews? The scriptures have not changed. Yep. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, I just read to you from Malachi 3, verse number 6. I am the Lord, I change not. But the scriptures also have not changed. Psalm 119, verse number 89. Write it down. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. See, why this here, Brother Tony? God's not looking at it and saying, oh, man, I shouldn't have wrote it like that. Because guess what? I'm getting ready to do something here. For here what God said. I said it like that. It's going to stay like that. Amen. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Matthew 5, verse number 18 says this. For verily I say unto you, the heaven and earth has that you one jot or two shall no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Aren't you glad that nothing is changed in God's word? Yeah. Why is that so important? Yeah. Because nothing changed by what God did for me. God saved yeah. my soul. God gave me yeah. God has told me I can yeah. be here for all eternity. The scriptures have not changed and God not changed when it comes to the Jews because the scriptures no. say God is with the Jews. Amen. Yeah. Somebody better wake up and smell the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Get this here, culture can change, but God hasn't changed. That's right. The climate does change, but God hasn't changed. Amen. The critics are getting worse, but God still hasn't Amen. changed. Amen. Amen. God said, my word is my word, and that's the way it's going to be. Amen. Amen. You and I need to say, okay, God, if you haven't changed, if your scripture haven't changed, I think I better get on the side that's not changed. Amen. Amen. I better get to the one who's not changed. I better be with the one the Bible says that you're with. Who, who are you with, God? I will go with you. We have heard that God is with you. Amen. Wouldn't it be amazing if people say, hey, I want to come with you. Why? Because I believe God's working in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, sir. Think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I think, I think I'm going to hang out with you. Amen. I mean, you got to touch. You can get a hold of God. Amen. I think I like to be with you. Yeah. Here's my question. Would anybody ever say that about us? Amen. Now, I understand God's with the Jews. God's going to stay with the Jews. People should want to be with the Jews. But well, here's what I'm trying to get to right now. God says, I have not changed. God said, the scriptures have not changed. Yeah. And I need to ask you this question. Are you and I the type of people that people will say, I want to be with you? Because guess what? I don't see you changing. Mm -hmm. I see you lining up with the word of God. That can go well. I'll say it again. I see you lining up with the Word of God. Yeah. I believe the Word of God is, is again, that inerrant, infallible, uh, 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 inspired Word that it, 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 it won't be destroyed, that won't be gotten rid of, that God says it's not going to change. And I see you lining up with it. Yeah. Amen. I wonder how many of us people look at our lives and say, you know what? You wish it was. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Well, yeah, yeah you are wishy-washy. You, I, yesterday when I saw you, you was like this. Now today when I see you, you like this. And tomorrow you're going to be like something else. Amen. As a matter of fact, you are a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. Yeah. I, I don't want people to boy, get quiet on me. Go God, on, God, God. God. I'm trying to tell you, God is with the Jews. God hasn't changed what he said. And I don't want to be the type of person that lines up with what God said is not changing. Mm. Amen. 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 Here's my next question. We've got the scriptures. How do we line up with them? Do we stand up for them? Amen. Yeah. Do we stand up for this scripture? Do we stand up and say, hey, you can do this. I'm just going to be real honest about it. Did Omar and Talib, you guys are going to find out God's with the Jews. Amen. Amen. You're going to find out all of you congressmen and all of you politicians that are going around, all of these college professors, all of Marching against Israel, you will find out something. God is with the Jews. And you want to know something? There's only one professor. That's all I read about so far. One professor that said, hey, I am so sick and tired of my president, of my college, not standing up against these folks. Aren't you glad that he stood up and he stood up for Jesus? Amen. 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 We have a problem today. Yeah. We say we believe so, but we don't even stand up for it. Come on now. Amen. I'm talking about the scriptures now. Come on. It's good to line up. It's good to stand up. But we need to start speaking. Amen. 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 Somebody ask you who you with, I'm with the Jews. Amen. Amen. I am with the one that God said he is with. So yep. that's what we've got. We got the Supreme who has not changed. We got the scriptures that have not changed. Number three. Why are we with the Jews? God's with the Jews. And we have the statements. It have not changed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we narrowed it down. Now God spoke, gave us the Bible, and then he said, here's the thing I said in it. Take your Bible, if you would, please, and go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Let me just kind of run down through here real quickly and give it to you. Because I, I, I want you to write it down. First of all, I need you to understand the statement about the prosperity of Abraham. Yeah. Hey, the statement about the prosperity of Abraham. I want you to write this down, the statement about the privilege of Abraham. I want you to write this down, this prosperity and the privilege, but also write down this, the posterity. In other words, God says, guess what? You, not only Abraham will take care of you, but I'm going to be with the Jews. Amen. Yeah, amen. And then write the promise down that God made to Abraham. And I want you to understand something here. God made the promise in a pagan place with pagan people around pagan practice. Somebody say amen. amen. In other words, get this here, Brother Tony, that they could not just extinguish them, couldn't get rid of them, couldn't eliminate them, and God did it almost like this here, right in their face. Amen. Amen. You, know, you know what they got that John Cena, that wrestler, he goes around here, can't see me? Yeah. You know what God says? Look at me. Yeah. 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 He come out, you can't see me, and God says, look at me. Look at what I did. Right. I'm, I'm not trying to hide what I'm doing. That's right. I'm not trying to pretend like I didn't say it. But what did you do, God? Just chapter 12. Let me say amen. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. Watch this. Watch this. I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Are we gonna get to, you say, I've been blessed. Oh, yes, you have. Amen. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. But I want you to drop down to verse number 15. And the angel of the Lord called on Abraham unto heaven the second time and said, uh, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son. I'm sorry, but Genesis 22. I've said it for you. Genesis 22. 15, sorry about that, Genesis 22, and the angel of the Lord came, uh, called on Abraham out of heaven, and the second time, and said, but, but, uh, by myself I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast not done, thou hast done this thing, and hast not left thy son, thy only son, listen to this here, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiply, I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Somebody 
to say amen. amen. Let me preach what he's trying to say. I'm trying to tell you. I think I'll stick with the Jews. Why? Because God is with the Jews. Amen. Amen. He started way back there with Abraham, telling him, Abraham, you're going to prosper. Abraham, you got a special privilege. Abraham, your seed's going to be blessed. Abraham, this is my promise to you. Listen to me now. Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Amen. You say, preacher, what does all that have to do with anything? God said, right there now, I spoke, my scripture speaking, and I'm making a few little statements. If you didn't get it, I'm with the Jews. That's right. Now watch this now. I want you to get this because what the devil's trying to do is get us to run away from it. So we got the supreme that has not changed. We've got the scriptures that have not changed. We've got the statements that have not changed. But we got the slandering has not changed. The slanderers have not changed. They're still lying on them. They're still ridiculing them. They're still pretending that they're okay with them. Until finally they do something like bomb them. And then, oh, watch this now. Our president said, don't let your rage. Amen. Yeah, don't, don't, don't let your rage blind you. They're not blind. That's right. Hey, man. I told my friend, I didn't even tell you. And uh, but, but, but guess what? That, that land that, was, that, that they have, it was given to them by God. That's right. That's right. God gave the land. God said drive them out. That's right. Hey, man. Amen. And so they're not over there talking about some. We just took it. They said God gave it. That's right. Amen. That's the reason why when any country starts talking about you need to share it, somebody needs to stand up and say, no, they don't. That's right. Come on. I ain't going to I'm Amen. just telling you something. Some things are going on today, and we right. fall in a prey to it because we don't understand that God is with the Jews, that he's going to always be with the Jews. Amen. Right. Amen. Go to Ezra, if you don't mind. Ezra. Ezra. I'll just get this down. They're cunning. They're conspiring. They're complaining about them. You know what God says? That hasn't changed. That's, that's, that's still the same stuff going on. That's right. That's and right. what you need to do is get this. And while they're doing all that, stick with the Jews. Yeah. Amen. Ezra chapter 4, verse number 1. Ezra 4, verse number 1. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. So to get to Job, you're going too far. The Bible says in verse number 1. Now, Ezra 4, verse 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah had been heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, get this, let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him. Since the days of that guy right there, Asherhadon, king of Asher, which brought us up hither. Oh, watch this now. Here's what they said. Hey, let us help. Let, let us get in with this, or in with you on this. Sound kind of like an antichrist type of a spirit. Yeah. The spirit of antichrist is already here. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. Amen. And look down to verse number 11 now. They said, hey, we want to we want to help you. We want to see God like you. We want to be a part of this. We want to do sacrifices to him. They got mad because they told him basically, no. Look at verse 11. Now this is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him. That's the king, even unto at, at, at Artaxerxes, the king. Thy servant, the men on this side of the river, and at such a time, being known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee the, uh, to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the and, uh, and have set up the walls thereof and joined the foundations. <laughs> when you don't do it like they want to do it, right. here's what they do. They turn on you. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's exactly what it is. It hasn't changed. That's right. It hasn't changed. If you don't give us a piece of your land, we're going to bomb you. Right. We want to coexist. No, they don't. No. Right. They want to get in there and take over. Come on, help me. Yeah. Yeah. I said, they are, they are cunning. They are conspiring. They are complaining. Why? Because God is with the Jews. That's right. And it hasn't changed. It's the same. 
and it's going to stay. Let's say, somebody say amen. 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 Watch this. Are you really with me? Amen. Amen. Not only have the slanderers not changed, have not changed, but the savagery has not changed. Amen. Exodus chapter number one. They're savages. Amen. I'll just say it again. They have not changed. Yes. They're wicked. Yes. I, I want the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they got to go yeah. through all of this stuff. I'm not turning my back on the Jews. Yeah. And God said it hasn't changed. And it won't change until finally Jesus Christ comes and set up his rule on the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to say, we will be with you. Why? Because God is with you. Mm. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus 1. <clears throat> Verse number 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their yeah. burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, piped them in Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. That sounds like God working. Amen. Amen. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Mad because they can't slow them down. They can't knock them out. They can't get them to where they feel such pain and grief and stuff that they just don't stop multiplying. Verse 13. And just made the children of Israel to serve rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. And all the services were in, they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sephora and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when ye do the sacrifice of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if be a daughter, then she shall live. Why do you think they kept the women? They were weak for they could abuse them. But the midwives, yeah. amen. Yeah. And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. But they saved the men children alive. Watch it. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Drop down to verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river, and every daughter he shall save alive. Savages. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Kill him. Amen. Yes. I don't think you get what's been going on in Israel. Oh, yeah. right. What's been going on? Yeah. Killing babies. Yeah. Amen. What's been going on? Going on beheading to God's people. Yeah. What's been going on? Beating them into submission. Yeah. What's been going on? They've been acting like beasts with them and raping them and abusing them. Yeah. You know what God said? Hey, guess what? I'm still with Israel. Now you and I need to understand, even though this stuff is going on, one day God's going to deal with those people yeah. that have been against yeah. his people, that have been beheading his people, that have been killing his yeah. baby, that have been beating them yeah. along the way, that have been acting like beasts and raping them and yeah. abusing them. God said, yeah. I'm going to deal with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We just get right down to it. The support God has given to them has not changed. The support God has given to them has not changed. But you read, do something for me. Write this down. I, this is one of the first times that I really got this what I call it context. God talking about his people. This, this, this amazes me. Sometimes reading the Bible, you just don't get it. Isaiah 54, verse 17. The Bible said, I'm not speaking. He said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Amen. I know we say every promise in the book is mine, but you need to understand, it wasn't all written to me, but it's something there for me. Right. But here's what he said to his people, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Here's what God just said. My support for them is not going to change. 
And I'm not going to let anything that's done against them cause me to turn my back on them. Right. Why is that important? Because God's trying to let us know I'm with the Jews. Right. And what you and I need to do is stand with the Jews. Yeah. Let me give you three things and I'm done. Why is it so important we stand with the Jews? Because God says you will get it. I gave my Bible to the Jews, and my Jews gave my Bible to you. That's right. That's right. Amen. In other words, God allowed the scriptures to come through the Jews. That's right. Amen. Amen. Write this down. Romans chapter 3, if you don't mind. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter number 3. This is why you know it's, it's going to be taken care of sooner or later. All of those people fighting against Israel, all of those people calling them names, all of those people that are doing all those wicked things against them, all of those people, God's going to deal with them. Why? Because God is with the Jews and God used the Jews to get us the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. What advantage then have the Jews? Aren't you glad God just put it right out there? Mm -hmm. But what profit is there of circumcision? Much everywhere, chiefly, you get that? Yeah. Because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. That's right. That's right. Wow. God gave it to them. Yeah. That's right. We would have what we have, be able to read what we read right. without the Jews. Amen. Amen. Uh, I know we don't like that. That's right. Right. This with a guy. As a matter of fact, Luke was a Gentile. I understand, but God said, get this here. It came, it came through the Jews. Amen. 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 Why is that important? Because God gave them this scripture. I guarantee you this. God gave them a whole lot of stuff that we're not even talking about tonight that you and I need to stand up and say, That's right. He gave it to them. I'm sticking with them. Amen. But we have something else. Not only do we get the scriptures through them. And I gotta go get done, so I still have a little voice here. God gave us the Savior through them. Yeah. Amen. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Verse number 4 and 5. Who are Israelites? To whom pertain to the adoption? And the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Romans 9, verse 5 now. Who are the fathers and who uh, get this now? And of whom are concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. I like this word, this word. Amen. 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 It's in the book. I didn't say it. God right. said, you might as well just get in line with it yeah. because we got the scriptures through the Jews. We got the Savior through the Jews. Amen. 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 Which leaves the last thing on to get. We got salvation through that Jew. Amen. Christ is a Jew. Amen. Uh, 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 listen to me now. Country folks want to paint them with blonde hair and blue eyes. Well. Because he's ours. Well. He's not from Mississippi, Alabama, or Arkansas. That's right. <laughs> like people want to say, well, you know, over there in that country, everybody was dark skinned. I don't know all about skin. I don't understand. Some say, well, it was olives. I don't understand all that, but I do know one thing. The Bible said Christ came through the Jews. Yes, yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of other people that say we don't care about him because we don't want him and we don't need him. Oh, yes, you do. Why? Because salvation, just like the Savior and the Scripture, came only through that one Jew, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. As yeah. for yourself, means there's salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven, yeah. Yeah. Amen. whereby they must be saved. Romans 10, 14, who says the call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. 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 You know what God says? Side with, uh, pick which side you want. That's right. Watch this right. now. Who's on the Lord's side? <laughs> God said, well, get over here. Right. 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 Go back to that Zechariah 8. Yeah. That's right. They didn't try to get them to come to where they were. God got it set up. Yeah. We're going to go to his place. Yeah. You on the Lord's side? 
to get to with the Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. Get your words with the Lord with the Jews. Amen. Amen. God is with the Jews. I stand with the Jews. I'm going to do all I can to let the Jews know and let this world know that I'm going to be where God is. Amen. So write this down, Psalm 122, verse 6. We gave it to you before, but I'm closing with it. So pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace for the Jews. Pray that the Jews keep on prospering. Pray that the Jews have enough power to overcome the enemy. How does God want to do that? I don't know. People say, they should want to wipe them out. Well, you got to understand something here. That's not Christian love. God said, utterly destroy them. That's right. I even say that if they'd have done all that, what they were supposed to do, they might not have the troubles they have today. But God still hasn't gone away from God is with the Jews. Pray for their peace. Pray for their prosperity. Pray for their power. And pray for their protection. Mm -hmm. Say, preacher, if God's with them, what we got to pray for? I say, what? What you got to pray for? So God will know, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. 